Mate, no Adam Weesex. Who the fuck is Adam Weesex? Ladies Come. and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome back to the Wrestle Plug YouTube channel and podcast. Fuck it, we'll give you the audio as well. So if you're listening via audio, Simon, thank you very much, because he's literally the only person I think that does that at this point. This is the end of your awards, part one. Part one is mainstream wrestling. Part two is British independent wrestling. So you know the worst female of the year is going to Puna Tricks. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it is time for some... <laughs> Cameron Ass is like, yeah. yeah. By the way, it, we've been digging around. Of course, I am Aaron Nixie, Egyptian Death Machine. We've been digging around and we found Cameron Anderson lying around in a Homer-infused cocaine rampage, still enjoying <laughs> his tag team title victory from CWP Pumpkins and Power Drivers. Yes, indeed. One half or one third, depending on how you look at it, of the CWP Tag Team Champions, one third of the incredible bromance, Cameron Anderson is in the house. Look at that gold. Look at it. That's right. I've not been about. I've not oh, been on the shit, pod. I've been a bit busy. Like more expensive than Robbie Nitro's house. <laughs> you beat... I, think it, I think it might be, you know. So you I beat your know. gold. I have a look on. Nice belt. It's a nice belt. I have to get it, I have to get it um, valued by someone. But Someone tell John Nurse to stick to making belts. because Go find Rick Harrison. Go find Rick Harrison. <laughs> No, Rick Harrison, he's busy. But no, I ain't been on the pod in a while. You know, I've been a little bit busy winning gold. Given sloppy toppy. All right, less of that, please. That's for games night, you dirty, <laughs> dirty boy. Now, he's spoken already, so you already know he's here. He is, of course, the man who puts the wood in Bollywood. He is the only man to be on 10 straight concurrent FBI 10 most wanted God. lists. And, of course... <laughs> The man who can be found sniffing around every good nursery in London is, of course, Tanvir Verdi. I'm not at nurseries, but hello, everyone. <laughs> nursery row. Um, yeah. <laughs> you, know Do you know what? Every time I think about you now, all I can think about is that famous sketch from, um, I can't remember what TV show it was. Like It was the, um, oh, it's, it's a while back now. It was like a, a sort of a news like parody TV show. You probably remember it. I can't remember. But it's not a... John Oliver, is it? No, it was oh. something a little bit more old school than that. Um, but it had like this joke on there about a uh, paedophile that um, basically fucking it's it's terrible. It was a paedophile <laughs> who disguised himself as a actual school, and then they had CCTV footage of a school creeping down the fucking road. It's atrocious, mate. Uh, it's Channel Four for you, baby. Right, oh, yeah. less of that stuff. We're here to talk about wrestling, mainstream wrestling. That, of course, means televised wrestling, AEW, NJPW to a certain degree. It also, of course, includes the big dub. And we're going to give our picks, and then we're going to read out what you guys thought because you were kind enough to send your emails in. By the way, for anyone listening who maybe didn't get a chance to send them in, you still have a chance to get your indie picks in because we haven't recorded that yet uh, when you're listening to this. And if you want to get those in, it's wrestleplug.gmail.com. Or send a private message to at WrestlePlug across all social media platforms. Tanvi Verdi, yeah. as you have taken so much abuse, bless you, on this podcast, I will allow you to choose the first award that we will give out. Let's go. Let's go. Um, let's start it off hot with best match. All right. The match of the year for 2022 in mainstream wrestling. Cameron Anderson, mm. what is your match of the year? All right. For me, I mean, there's been some incredible matches this year. So I've written down some honorable mentions before I get into it. But Pretty I want to sure say Goldberg honorable... didn't wrestle this year. <laughs> he didn't wrestle this year. So unfortunately, no Goldberg this year, guys. I wanted to find a way, you know, maybe like just best looking. Mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately, that's not an award this time. Uh, but for best match, I've got a couple of honorable mentions straight, straight away. So I thought both War Games matches were impeccable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Hell in a Cell bout between Cody and Rollins, I feel like that that would have been probably match of the year for me if I hadn't been there for certain other events. Lynch and Belair, SummerSlam and WrestleMania. Bangers. I absolutely Mania fantastic. And um, I think you're not expecting on this. Raw. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Baron Corbin, just everything he's doing right now. And you know what? This one's going out to you, Mad Cat. Um, but this, you might not expect this because this is one of the matches when we were here, we were there to see. 
I've got Seamus and Walter as an honourable mention Gunter Ooh, uh, for the IC title wow. because my favourite match from that show was the main event, Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. <clears throat> I've, I've only seen it the one time, which is when we were there live. I haven't watched any of these back, mm. uh, but I I completely just lost myself in the match and I, I really enjoyed it. I feel like that's what it's all about. Oh, it was an amazing match. Like, yeah. great storytelling. Yeah, yeah everything was good about WWE and, and yeah. that show. Yeah, from watching it at home compared to you guys there, I I'm lucky. I, no, yeah, I, I felt I felt it went by like a breeze, like like I had fun watching it. Whereas I think afterwards, you guys said it was good watching, but it just felt so long. The the match itself. me it didn't feel that long. Yeah, um, it didn't feel that long. It did not feel that long until you look at the time. Imagine if like, you literally just tune into this podcast now, knowing what Tanvir Verdi is all about, and all you hear is it didn't feel that long. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Just, uh, just awkward, really, more than anything. Yeah, no, it's um, it was an amazing match. It really was. It was, it was special. That whole night was special, and what it means to us having the first ever stadium show since 1992 SummerSlam is a big fucking deal. Tanvir Verdi, your match of the year for 2022 um, mainstream wrestling. So I'm just gonna go shoot. It. I didn't really have any on the raw mentions like Cam. Um, it's a match from a show that you two are at, and Cam just mentioned it, Seamus v. Gunther from Clash of the Castle. It was just, I think it was that first shot, because the thing is, it's just the two of them just standing in the ring together, just staring down, and you have, it was like two kings and their armies meeting. It's like the two armies were battling the outside with them, Butch and Ridge and then Imperium going out outside, and then finally the Clash of the Two Kings happened. And it was it was just so good, and I think especially the standing ovation at the end for Sheamus, and it, and he, and he, he does what he says, banger after banger after banger, and it was just so good. Yeah, it's so originally I actually did have this as my match of the year, but I was so certain somebody would pick it that I picked something else because I felt like it probably wouldn't get a mention otherwise because it is technically mainstream wrestling now. Um, but that match is a fucking masterpiece. The fact that Meltzer gave it five stars and he gives WWE no five stars ever. That's a big fucking deal. Um, you know, like I don't really care about Meltzer's reigns. I don't put too much stock in them. But in a moment like that, you realize how special it is. Being there live for that, Ebenezer the Geezer will tell you, you've sat next to me. I was literally just whacking him on the side of his face with my member as I was just going, I was going ballistic. Like, Sheamus is for me like one of the true standout wrestlers of the years. He's one of yeah. the best years of wrestling he's ever had, and he's missed quite a few weeks with injuries and obviously getting married and stuff like that. Bless him, and he, you know, he's worthy of that. He's earned the right to fucking take a rest, but he has been phenomenal this year. Yeah, I, and I that 100% match agree with you. He's a masterpiece. Sheamus is for me yeah. one of the most <clears throat> underrated heavyweight wrestlers oh, in the absolutely. history of the business. Yeah. He got he got the name Butch over as well. Like that that, that was a tall task because everyone, everyone just shits on the Butch thing still. Yeah. Like <laughs> you know, now... Adam Lee was banging on about it, wasn't he? On a state of wrestling address, and it's that That's thing true. of like, do you know what, mate? It's more over than Pete Dunne ever was. And and initially hey, on TV every week. <laughs> and yeah. initially it was and he's a having bit great like... matches every week as well. It was like initially it was a bit of a shock. It's like, oh, have they renamed him? But over time, it's grown on you, and you've got like little chants and. And it works. Seamus has helped get that over. I think for me, um, sorry, the reason I think um, that the main event for me surpasses uh, that IC title match Mm. is is just the fact that while I was there watching it, I just wanted Drew McIntyre to win so bad. I completely think that Roman winning was the correct decision, but I wanted to see history happen. I don't. And every claymore I bit. So that's that's why it edges it for me. I don't blame you because the moment Broken Dream Stop started playing, I thought, holy shit, Drew's winning. Because it's like you give him this special entrance, you tell the story of like, here's the guy who was the chosen one who left and now he's Out of time. Yeah. So and, sad and, just, and just hearing the crowd sing along, it was just like, the moment I heard it, it's like, it's like he's got to be winning this match. <laughs> Like they, they did a great job at making Drew feel like a big deal. Because I think before, everybody was like, okay, we're getting Drew Roman again. How's this going to go? But they did such a great job with that just video package that it's like, yeah, Drew's a huge deal. 
I think the whole night was really booked very well because yeah. even in the car, um, Dex was saying, um, you know, surely um, if one of them, if Sheamus wins, then Drew's losing in the main event. Mm-hmm. And obviously Sheamus did not win earlier in the night. So I think people were expecting a title change. They've done an incredible job to kind of sell us on that, that that mm-hmm. could happen. And realistically, that is what you need in a contender for the title. You and need you to Tyson believe that. Fury and Austin Fury attempting to cash in. Like, that just was had so a funny. You had Kerry and Cross as well. Yeah, he was at me, ringside. Yeah. yeah, I think for me, because uh, I remember Solo Cruz Sikawa telling me making day, his debut on the main roster as well, which is fucking awesome for it us. It was all the moving parts. It was all the it just, different It had a parts. lot. It had a lot. I think Cruz was telling me the next day, like he thought it was maybe slightly overbooked. But for me, we don't it. get pay-per-view matches. I, I didn't feel it at all because I think we don't really get pay-per-views over here. No, I, so they gave we get WWE everything. live events. Like, obviously, mm-hmm. if we're going to have one every 30 years, then we want it to be the most overbooked, yeah. in, like, because... insane thing possible. And that's what I liked about that yeah. match. Yeah, because we just ran down all the people in the main event. It sounds overbooked, but the thing is, because they were all such great moving parts and knew their roles, they weren't, like overlapping too much it was just all kind of melded together and worked well the thing is i think even though there was kind of those interruptions in there there's that like extra sort of um mm. extra moments in there yeah. no austin one else Fury got into the ring the best austin fury's moment in that match was so good oh i lost my that shit was solo yeah. like because ebenezer yeah, doesn't you know surprise. ebenezer doesn't watch the um the product very often and mm. uh, not as regularly and he was like who the fuck's that and i'm like mm. as soon as the hook comes off it's fucking so much to for i was like mm. fucking losing my shit and it's that thing of like <clears throat> you know a lot of people were like oh that's not that big a deal well it fucking is now look how yeah. big a deal solo sakara is already just months on you know mm. we're only a few months removed and he already feels like one of the Fast track superstar was, feels like he's going to be a mega star. That guy was Clash at the Castle of September. <laughs> yes, yeah, it was. September, yeah, September first, five first couple of three, days. Three months on, and look at him now. <laughs> exactly, and he's one of the biggest things in the business. Yeah, enough said. Um, yeah, I've gone for something a little bit surprising uh, for a lot of people. Like I said, I was going to have Gunter versus Sheamus Clash at the Castle. That's what I'd written down, but I knew somebody would pick it, which is why I've gone with FTR versus. The Briscoe Brothers. Which one? Damn boy, the first one. Um, oh, yeah. Masterpiece. Absolute master. The best tag team wrestling match I've seen in the past five years. Uh, probably the best tag team match I've seen since DIY versus um, was it AOP and the gang in Toronto. Um, uh, D- oh, DIY, the, um, uh, uh, the revival. Yeah, in Toronto. Revival, yeah, three like, falls. yeah. And I mean, that speaks volumes. Like FTR are just next level. Absolutely next level. And the reason I wanted to pick it is because I felt like, you know, realistically, there's not going to be much Ring of Honor on this list. But the Briscoes as well are, for me, the greatest tag team to never be signed by a major company. And people can say they don't like them for whatever reason. But when it comes to wrestling acumen, when it comes to promos, uh, for anyone who saw their um, COVID cinematic that I actually did, probably the most underrated cinematic match as well. Um, their one-on-one fight on the chicken farm. It was so well done. Absolute masterpiece. Gritty, violent. And this match was just spectacular. The sheer it was, fluidity. <clears throat> it was a clinic from start to finish. It was It was the respect at the end because it hadn't quite boiled over into this blood food that we know now after they had the two out of three falls and then the dog collar match. At the time, it was like a big deal. And then the hugs and the respect at the end, it's like, yeah, it makes sense because these two are the epitome and the peak of tag team wrestling as we know it in the modern day if they had had this match in nwa in like 1970 it would have completely changed the game um they are like for me there is no greater code of honor there's no greater compliment you can give to modern day wrestlers than this would have absolutely stolen any show back in the 70s and 80s this could have been put in the dallas sportatorium you know all those kind of incredible places like amarillo texas and stuff like that where the territories were red hot and they were making crazy bang for buck and this was just a magnificent match utterly incredible just imagine if it happened in the legion hall where pwg used to run how Oh, that place would have popped yeah off. but then i would have had to listen to fucking excalibur's commentary mm. and I, I don't like that by the way ian riccoboni has absolutely killed oh it. yeah right absolutely killed is it, it ian riccoboni and then who's the other guy i always forget his name caprice um, coleman 
Yeah, Caprice Coleman has gone Coleman. from being because he was a good wrestler, but he is an incredible so, he, color commentator. He's so underrated Absolutely. in the ring, Caprice Coleman. Yeah. Yeah, so that's our picks. Uh, we'll run down, obviously, everyone's picks at the end. Uh, we'll go through them and have a bit of fun with that. Right, Cameron Anderson, it is now your turn to choose a award. Which one would you like to pick? So many great options. But I think I, I want to I wanna say about uh, underrated. I think a uh, most underrated wrestler. All right, the most underrated wrestler or wrestlers, depending on how you look at it, of 2022. Tanvi Verdi, who, in your opinion, is the most underrated talent in mainstream wrestling in 2022? It's going to be be a bit of a throw-off one. People may not think of him underrated, but I think for this year, to me, he's been underrated. Seth Rollins. Really? Because from the, the beginning of the year, you have the Roman Reigns match at Royal Rumble, oh. which stole the show and has easily one of my favorite entrances of the year of Seth coming down in the Shield gear. Perfect. Then you have the whole hit mystery opponent for WrestleMania, which we which turned out to be Cody. Then you have the Cody feud. And now you're having him do the US stuff with Bobby Lashley. Seth Rollins, and I feel that he's not talked about enough. That's the thing. I feel like he like he's always off to the side of like he's one of their their bigger stars, but he's not but because of how big Roman Reigns is now, he's not quite in the spotlight as much. So so I think for me, Seth Rollins is my most underrated of the year because he, he's just been having such good matches as well. And the character. Yeah. Um, I mean, if, if you had a workhorse for the year award, I'd probably give it to him. Yeah. Because he's just worked harder than anyone else. <clears throat> he's kept Raw afloat, you know. Um, and last year as well, when Raw wasn't nearly as good, and particularly at the early end of this year, let's not forget, you know, like you say, the Cody Rhodes feud with the Helen Sound and stuff like <clears throat> that. Like, he took it upon himself to make everybody who's in the ring with a bigger star. Austin Theory feels like a bigger deal after being in the ring with Seth Rollins. Uh, Cody Rhodes, massive deal after being in the ring with Seth Rollins. Matt and that's Riddle. what he does. That's what he Matt does. Matt Riddle feud as yeah. well. Yeah, Matt Riddle's another good example of that. Uh, although apparently uh, currently uh, being um, currently suspended for a wellness violation. Um, which, who would have thought? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, a great pick. Cameron Anderson, your most underrated for 2022. All right. So for this one, Bill Goldberg, like there's, on. it's not Goldberg this time. This is the Goldberg Award, obviously. But the Goldberg not, Award. <laughs> this has not been won by Goldberg this year. I can so hear Adam Lee think... screaming from it from, <laughs> from, from <laughs> fucking Bournemouth. Fuck you. He's so angry. So obviously, yeah, I, I did uh, you know. That's how I made it. That's how um you know I first broke into the wrestle plug by having Goldberg as my most underrated wrestler for 2021. But this year I've got something a little bit different because I think this guy has been really good, and I think just considering who he's normally in there with, he tends to be overlooked. And I think Frankie T has this guy as well. It's Ridge Holland. Uh, to me, easily the most improved of the year. Oh, yeah. Um, I yeah I think he's been fantastic. Um, for definitely the second half of the year. Um, I was thinking about maybe having uh, Hangman Page just because he's really taken a back seat, and I feel like that's I feel like that's unfortunate because I do think he's great. But I think Ridge Holland for me, like the matches, uh, the match with the Usos uh, that they've had recently for the tag titles, uh, as well as the match they had, um, obviously War Games. I was going to say, he was yeah, I was going to say he was probably the MVP of War Games. He put in a hell of a shift in War Games. Yeah, like he did. He does. What he does, he does a lot of the dirty work. He yeah. he sets the platform so that guys like Pete Dunne and Sheamus can kind of do all the more flash stuff, you know? Mm. But he's... Rich Holland's one of those guys that would have been so over in, like, the early 90s. Just this mm. big, meaty hoss of a, a unit. Um, you know, he, he fits the archetypal wrestler. Um, you know, he's, 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 I've noticed he's been on the mic a little bit recently, and he's actually quite good. He's got some chops. Mm. You know, I, I like the look as well. They've got the kind of Peaky Blinders s look going on, which is very cool, very hip to popular culture, and very a very cool nod to British culture as well. Yeah, no, I I think that's a very good pick. To be fair, I think I he's do. just I think yeah. he's just one of those guys that's just completely done a one eighty since the start. Yeah, yeah. Ever since he broke Biggie's neck, essentially, he's been fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He eliminated the Hoss competition <laughs> so that he could move forward. I'm on to you, Ridge. 
I'm on to you. Uh, it's a great but then pick. Solo rocked up. <laughs> My one is are uh, very. This could cause some arguments. Um, because I've gone for a tag team, and I think that's I okay. Well, no, that's not what I think will cause an argument. <laughs> so, in most people's eyes, they aren't underrated. But for me, the reason they're underrated is because they're on a product which, even though it is mainstream, for me, doesn't get watched enough. And also, they're not, even though they have easily the most exciting and most hilarious gimmick of the year, they still, for me, feel like they're just not a big deal mm. in terms of the overall tag team schematics of what's going on in their company. So I've gone with the acclaimed as my most underrated of the year. And um, the reason for that is because, first of all, incredible wrestlers that are the full package. Both have hilariously incredible charisma. The Sizz Me Daddy stuff is amazing. It's hilarious. I still want my fucking t-shirt. I was told by Ajax I was going to get one for Christmas. I'm waiting, bitch. Um, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where, are they underrated in the grand scheme of things? No, but are they underrated in terms of what they should be and what they're not presented as because of bad booking or bad television? Yes. And that's why I picked them. Because for me, like, they are next level shit. And also what's cool about them is they are what a modern tag team should feel like. They're very pop culture. I like the rap this. And, you know, there's a lot of pop culture references. They feel very in, very popular. They feel like yeah. the weekend or Drake of professional wrestling. They feel like they really appeal to a modern market, but they also appeal to hardcore wrestling fans like ourselves because they work super yeah. well. They have great <clears throat> matches. They have great rivalry, but they're in a company where people still pay more attention to the Young Bucks when they're acting like dickheads or even when they're in the trios. They pay more attention to the Lucha Brothers. They definitely pay more attention to FTR, even though FTR aren't getting the bookings they deserve. So for me, the acclaimed are easily one of the most underrated talents. I, I thought the way you were going starting that off, I thought your most underrated was going to be Lucha Bros. I really thought that. It's one of those things where absolutely it could be. Cameron Anderson is completely frozen. I have no idea what's going on with him. Um, <laughs> it just looks like he's like... Uh, he's in he's giving me the fuck it? me eyes. Yeah, yeah. It's it's quite funny because he's just... Well, he's, he's just him, it's very... It's kind of creepy. What's There's disturbing is he's just joined again. He's fucking cloned himself. I know, right? It's fucking... It's a bit, bit creepy, if I'm there being honest. But it is what it is. All right. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Uh, the Wi Fi, um, the Wi Fi went unfortunately. I can't wait to edit uh, that. That's going to be a lot. Literally, have you seen sorry, like, how it froze? <laughs> <laughs> you look like a oh. rapist, fam. You know, <laughs> <laughs> absolute <laughs> jokes. Um, but yeah, anyway, so bottom line, the acclaimed definitely for me the most underrated. Any honorable mentions because there's a lot of talents who could be thrown here. I think, yeah, I said, I said Hangman Page as I went through mine. I think that's kind of like for similar reasons as you've picked the acclaimed, um, just where, you know, he was the champion, but he wasn't being featured prominently. Uh, obviously lost the belt to CM Punk uh, and then was hurt when he faced John Moxley. He? he felt very transitional. Yeah, and it's such a shame because I, I really love Adam Page. I, think I actually think he's better now that he's lost the belt. Like I, I'm starting to slowly come around to him as in this rivalry with, don't do it again, um, with um, with uh, John Moxley. I'm really enjoying the current thing. I liked it. I really liked his promo where he talked about being depressed yeah. and how you know he was a man with nothing to lose and things like that. A lot of people didn't like that. I actually really I loved that promo. I loved it. I think that stood out as one of his true turning points. I didn't think it, he was that over when he was Kenny Omega's partner. Everyone uh, said it was amazing it was, booking. I thought it was massively overrated. Yeah, it, Hangman probably has one of, one of the best lines of a promo this year because it's so relatable. I'm tired. I'm depressed. The medicine isn't working, but I'm still here. Does yeah. that that line alone is just so relatable and like, yeah, I want to root for this guy because he's he's representing me in a way. My second pick was Pack, but he also won the All Atlantic Championship and the Trios Championship. Yeah. So it's, you know, can still be underrated, time. like you said. The acclaimed were well, our tag champs now, but they're still underrated. Yeah, I just feel like it doesn't matter how well they do buy them, it's not enough. I just don't think like it's enough. I, yeah. I don't. I, I find do it you... astonishing that they're happy to give, you know, these guys. Like, how does QT Marshall get airtime over Pac? Do you right. think the issue with Pac, though, is the whole travel thing? Because he goes back and forth between the Potentially, UK Potentially, yeah. I mean, lot. if he was willing to double yeah. down and move, maybe they would, you know, push yeah. him a little bit further. But, you know, it's hard not to buy into this conspiracy theory of sorts that the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega have too much clout. 
especially when you see what's going on with the current product with how they handled the CM Punk situation. We all want it to be a work so badly so that we can say, fair enough, boys, you've done well. But chances are it's not, in which case it just makes them look like utter pillocks. Um, It's a shame. There's a lot of underrated wrestlers on that show. Um, But then there's also, there's underrated wrestlers everywhere. You know, there's, there's loads of guys you could pick for this. Again, The Miz has a great year, but doesn't really get appreciated because he's too sports entertainment based. Um, you know, I, I think you could argue maybe the Usos in some way are a little bit underrated, even though they're part of the bloodline thing. They always they've had to take a back seat deliberately for the basis of the storylines. Um, there's a multitude of different people who could be truly underrated. Um, you know, some people might argue Ricochet, but then you know, I don't know if you saw he had a match with Gunter on SmackDown last week. Amazing, absolute banger! Like. Trying to steal the match of the year candidate right at the end of the year. Spectacular stuff. So, you know, everyone, yeah, everyone around, even the most he? underrated talents have their strengths, you know, and have their glories in the year. So. Right. My pick. Uh, I am going to choose. What'd you say? Boss man. <laughs> boss man, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. yeah. And as the boss, you shouldn't fucking interrupt me, bitch. Um, <laughs> right. Worst female wrestler of the year. I reckon this is going to be a juicy one. So I want to know, starting with Tammy Verde, oh, because I, I reckon Cameron Anderson always comes through with the strongest here. He's great at being the one. I so, had Tammy Verde. Who do you think is the shittest women's wrestler of 2022? So I had two down, one W three, one AEW. No, you don't sit on the fence. You have to pick no, one. No, I'm going for the AEW one. Obviously, because um. We don't know her, Marina Shafir. Oh, God, the worst promo. We don't know is. her. Do you know her? Because I don't. Yeah, just not been great in the ring. Just been a piss poor signing to but be she honest. She wrestles barefoot, barefoot, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, foot fetish. Wiki hands. feet, wiki feet. <laughs> wiki feet, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just... um. I'm sure yeah. she's lovely. I yeah. never, I never enjoy. Technical. That's the thing. I do and I don't. I do enjoy it, but then I also feel bad because I think you know it's it's not like I'm sure she's a lovely person. I think she is she the one who's married to Roderick Strong. And yes. Together now, like she seems yeah. lovely, and you know, but the, just the, the promo sucked donkey balls. It was terrible, and you know, she just she's awful. She's nothing she does is interesting at all, and it's it's a shame because you'd think, oh, this is one of the four horsewomen of MMA. She must have something going for her. Well, no, and there's a reason why WWE shit candor as quick as they did because nobody gives a fuck, yeah. and even AEW can't do anything with her in a women's division, which frankly is subpar. Now that's being polite. Yeah, that that's all I've got to say. To be honest, cool. what was your um, what was your WWE pick then? Just out of curiosity, my WWE one thing. because she's just been all over the place. Not that she's bad in the ring. I just think bad booking. Yeah. Alexa Bliss. Just ah, bad booking. Just I bad believe booking. last year Alexa Bliss was Cameron Anderson's pick. Last that year made a lot of right. sense because of all the Bray Wyatt shit. <laughs> and now it's time for Cameron Anderson's pick of 2022. <clears throat> Which women's wrestler drew your ire more than any other, sir? You know what? This is actually a really difficult one this year. I think women's wrestling has been fantastic yeah. all around. I had a look, actually, because I was really struggling to pick. I had to go on both roster pages for AEW and WWE. And I couldn't really find anyone that I thought was terrible or you like irredeemable a feminist this all year. of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, basically. So oh, I've, always I've been got a with Luna Tricks. <laughs> I've always been a, I've always been a feminist. Fem Anderson. Luna Tricks. Fem Anderson. Equal rights, equal fights. <laughs> equal <laughs> rights. <laughs> Get that on a t-shirt, mate. Get that is fucking. I'll tell you what. A women's wrestler can make shit tons of money with that yeah. t-shirt. Holy cow. Don't fucking tell tricks yeah, about that. She'll fucking steal that. Quick, yeah. we need to get we need to get that copyright immediately. <laughs> we should give that to yeah, Victor yeah. Logan. That should be his gimmick. Battering <laughs> women. <laughs> I don't know if he'll go for that, to be honest. Why? Well, yeah, he looks like a domestic abuser. Actually, give it to Daddy. <laughs> what? Oh, Jesus. I'm sorry. It's a joke. There's nothing funny about domestic abuse whatsoever. He looks All like right. a domestic abuse. But there is something very funny about giving the... Oh, God, please. Like, we're, we're acting like it's horrible, but how many fucking wrestlers have legitimately had a gimmick like it? Who, who remembers Jamie Noble with fucking Nidia, mate? Come on, man. I, I remember Chris Hero as wife Scott beater. Scott Steiner and Test with Stacey Keebler. Yeah. Like, it's just, you know... <laughs> 
Uh, fucking, Chris... I remember they actually went full blown with it once back in the day in the Attitude Era. I think it was um, Chad from Lowdown, and they actually had an angle where he was the uh, rumor was he got beaten up by the locker room, hey Fabe, because he apparently beat up his girlfriend. Uh, like that was a that was a storyline they ran with in like ninety uh, nine. That's just grim. <laughs> just nowadays, it's just cucking instead. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, Bobby Lashley. Good stuff. Right, who is it then? Come on. <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah, I, I spoke with Frankie T, actually, because I, I really couldn't decide, but what? I think... You asked Frankie T for an opinion. <laughs> no, I, I just I just discussed Oh, yeah, this. he showed um, me a screenshot, which, you know what? If you thought I was offensive, you should see what Cameron Anderson wrote, but I won't throw him under the Ooh. bus. <laughs> anyway. Um, Everything gets that. back to me. I've warned let's you Let's just ignore this. that. Let's just ignore that. Um, <laughs> he's wearing a suit, but he looks like he's ready for his court appeal. Don't he wearing that suit? <laughs> but no, I think uh, this woman, I don't think she's been irredeemably shit. Um, I just think, you know, when the spotlight's been on her, uh, she hasn't really ran with the ball, so to speak. Uh, so I've had to go with Shotzi, unfortunately. I really oh. like Shotzi as a character, uh, but I just think in her sort of... You are uh, um, Her showcase nice matches... Time, aren't you? Oh, you That's know, she wasn't terrible. She wasn't really hard. Well, it's because I like her gimmick. I do, but I just think the matches. What, what? She comes out in a tank? <clears throat> yeah, I just, I just think she's it? cool. I think she's nice, okay? I just thought, I said she last year I was nice bro. about Alexa Bliss. I just said, like, I think she's been fantastic beforehand, <laughs> but the Lily gimmick just was not <laughs> it, unfortunately. Yeah, it was um, And for this year, I think when in the Money in the Bank and the match with Ronda Rousey, when Shotzi's had a chance to shine, she just hasn't really pulled it through yeah. to me. So that's why I've had to go with her this year. I that's fair like enough. Being too, I feel like you're being too nice. I feel like you're you're now that you're like getting more and more bookings, you're like, oh, I don't want us to, you know, you got high profile female friends that you share a car <laughs> ride with. We all know who well, that Amanda is, Gray, by the way. Lovely bit yeah. of uh, Amanda Gray can suck my chode. <laughs> uh, honestly, the fucking state of that thing. <laughs> I, you know what? I'd have. I'm oh, sorry, but why should I have respect for somebody who basically stalks young boys online? Fuck that shit. She's fine. I don't care if you have, uh, you know, dispositions or whatever. That is of completely irresponsible behavior. I'm sorry. Somebody needs to fucking check that shit because that's just weird. Very weird. If a man did that, people would lose their fucking bananas over it. Absolutely. Right. Well, luckily for you guys, I have something that's going to trigger the entire fucking wrestling Ooh. universe. Um, because I haven't picked a woman i've picked an entire women's division i've gone with the entire AEW women's division as the worst female of the year and i'll tell you why because it's the worst book division in the history of women's professional wrestling what a mockery oh apparently they're the ones who raised wwe's game no fucking nonsense the bottom line is absolute lunacy you can you keep your hand down for now um <laughs> you can you can tag in when i'm done Bottom line is, this division is a fucking joke, mate. And yeah, you can say, oh, they've had some really good women's champions. Yes, they absolutely have. Jamie Hayter is a fantastic human being, a fantastic women's champion. But who gives a fuck about it? By the way, Dynamite from the week before last dropped down to like something like 760,000 viewers while the women were on. Like, you know, and that's not because they're bad. It's because they're booked horrific. Yeah. It is the worst women's division I have ever seen in mainstream wrestling. And the fact that any fucking person would have even the remotest amount of gumption to actually argue that that is what has driven WWE's women's division to be There's... better, you would have to be actually quite the... fucking moronic. The AEW women's division has Garbage. only really... No, they've only, had... they've only really had one match, and that was from last year, and that was the Brit Breaker, Thunder Rosa, like no... Brit Breaker? Yeah, Britt Baker. Ron Brit Breaker. Ron Breaker yeah. could liven up this women's division. Yeah. Get him in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a a joke. it's a joke. Jay Cargo is easily the most intriguing and exciting looking talent they have in the women's division. You know why? Because she looks like a fucking star. So will you butt her little marks? We're like, I don't like Jay Cargo because she doesn't do a 650 Sal Cow Triple Phoenix Splash. I don't give a fuck, mate. Yeah. That's what a fucking star it's... looks like. Yeah, it's the, it's the same thing that I think that I had with Charlotte Flair of like, I'm not calling them bad. I'm not calling them bad. They're just not for me. I find them a bit boring, but that doesn't mean they're bad. <laughs> what, are you insinuating that Charlotte Flair is boring? The, I, I find her a bit boring. No, I'm not saying she's bad in the ring. She's just not my cup of tea. I just find her a bit boring in the ring. So uh, Camille Verde has been cancelled by the podcast oh. <laughs> for his terrible opinions towards wrestling. Um, 
Saying Charlotte Flair is a bit boring. It's like saying, Do you know what, Randy Savage, not that much charisma, mate. <laughs> a bit boring, it. You know, like his promos, just a little bit under, you know, just he's, he didn't bring much energy to the game. You know? <laughs> Bret Hart, not much of a worker. Yeah, like Bret yeah. Hart, not very good at executing a hammerlock, Bret. And like, it just kind of triggered me a little bit. He's just not very, he's just not good at the wrestles, is he? Let's be honest. It's a bit like Bray Wyatt, mate. mate that Shit. match I sent you earlier was so sick. Um, Paul Nakano versus Heidi Lee Morgan. Oh, yeah. So good. Hey, fuck um, it. Yeah, you need to steal some of them holds, mate, especially the forward, the victory roll. Yeah, that mission. was That's so beautiful. sick. Absolutely um, gorgeous, yeah. I, I almost went with Thunder Rosa, actually. Um, really? I think she's had some, yeah, I think she's had some good matches, but I just think vacating the title in such weird circumstances really does knock her for me. Um, she just had she like has a, a reputation, doesn't really she, for being a bit of a shooter? Mm. And same with Maria Shafir. Like I've noticed that these these are two people that have got a, quite a reputation for being too stiff, taking liberties with opponents. Shame because for me, Thunder Rosa feels like a megastar. Like I, I feel like she could be a big deal. I actually think she'd benefit from a WWE system where she'd be a little bit more disciplined and they would sort of drill it into it. Look, you have to chill out with certain things. But for instance, Thunder Rosa could come in and immediately have a world class match with someone like a Ronda Rousey or a Shayna Baszler, she would really, really bolster what is already a great women's division in WWE. Um, whereas, again, I, I think she's just too legit for AEW. I think that's one of her biggest problems. Yeah, She's just too legit. She's too good, and she's but also a little bit too stiff. Um, but then, you know, Terry Funk is very famous for being the greatest puncher in the game because he legitimately would just punch people in the face. Yeah. So, you know, depends. It's a different era, I guess. So I understand that, especially as a worker, but... No, good picks. All right, Tanvir, you're back on the chopping block. What do you want to pick? Let's go with something uplifting. Best tag team. Well, you, you said you were in the last wasn't uplifting enough. <laughs> I would say it no. wasn't uplifting. You know, yeah. we gave some constructive yeah. criticism. I yeah, we did. Con- I said an entire women's division was shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I made some horrendous fucking comments, which no doubt have been censored by the chase, um, which is very important. Also, anyone who uses the A word gets the chase. <laughs> you know how it works. I'm, I'm sick and tired of you using it. It's just racist. It's unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> a for appropriation. Right. <laughs> tag team of the year. Go on in, Tanvir. You've picked best tag team. It's uh, only choice. So who you got? It's only really between two this year. I and swear it's... to God, if you picked fucking what's his name, um, that fucking gimp from New Japan, I'll kill you. Which gimp? <laughs> the fucking one that you think's really fucking good, who is literally one of the most boring wrestlers of all time. The one that. Oh we... no, not not Yoshihashi. Name. As much yeah, as him. Yoshi, he's grown yeah. on me. He has grown on me. Uh, best tag team FTR. Yeah, like a tumor. <laughs> FTR. <laughs> FTR. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. That's it's fair. only really between two this year. For, for me, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. FDR on the on box. <laughs> I was going to say Briscoe's, but... <laughs> yeah, can, yeah, I, can I say honourable mention to uh, Motor City Machine Gun? For you? I think they're no, because they're season. too old. <laughs> okay, fair enough. No, fair enough. They've, they've, <coughs> no, they've, they've, they just, they're timeless, aren't they? Classic. Yeah. Absolute classic. Very blessed <laughs> that I got to meet them in person at the first ever TNA tour. Nice. Yes, we get it. Your turn will come during the Indies. Don't you worry about mm. that. Don't you worry about that. Mm. By the way, Wrestle Plugs Diamonds in the Rough will be dropping early next year. Your yes. <laughs> Welcome, British Indies. Because mm. CWP just ain't a big enough platform for me. I'm just saying, man. Just putting it out there. And if you want to dispute that with me, Nitrous, you bring your shitty looking Mad Max mask to my house and I'll whoop your candy ass all over fucking Tunbridge Wells, you little hoe. Now then. Um, I all right. So, say, uh, FTR. Thank you for the opportunities, Mr. Nitrous. <laughs> for the opportunities, Mr. Nitrous, is a term this is, I never thought I'd ever hear this, in my life. This, Cam, this is why you need to jump on games nights for one of the prompts on Cripplash. Unbelievable. I will All right, do, I Cameron will Anderson, as a tag team aficionado and a tag team champion for a highly reputable wrestling company. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's it's a joke. Um, so, yeah, who is your tag team of the year in mainstream wrestling? All right, well, there's only one for me. Tanvir said there's two, Worthing but he's glory. off. 
by one. There's only one. It's the Usos. They have been fantastic this year. And they have broken the record. So I don't see how you can beat that. I think FTR has been fantastic. New Day, fantastic match recently with the Usos. Street Profits had that belter at, I think, Money in the Bank. I don't know. I don't know what I'm show, but it was a They banger. had one of the best matches at Mania as well, right? I forget oh, what they had, like, they had at the, Mania. Yeah, the RK Bro and also the Alpha Academy. Yeah, that was it. That was, that was that was so banger. much fun. Proper, that was that's a probably the most underrated match of the year. <laughs> yeah, probably, because that was so good. Um, Randy Orton is amazing. So RK Bro could easily be on here. Alpha Academy as well. Uh, but I think for me, the Usos, breaking the record... It, nothing really comes close to that in my eyes. I think what FTR has done has been fantastic, but in their home promotion, they haven't really been featured as prominently as I would like. So I don't know. There's always next year. I, I want it to be controversial. There is so a massive honorable mention to me is actually um, Katana Chance and Caden Carter of NXT. Oh, okay. Absolutely fantastic, those two women. Beautiful. Stunning to look at, great energy, great gimmick. They've really got it down with the whole dubstep kind of thing and the look, the cyberpunk stuff. It just works for me. But to me, there is nothing other than FTR this year for me. So it's FTR, and there's not really much else I need to say. Yeah, no, I just I look at what FTR's work rate has been. Uh, Briscoes are another honorable mention. The Usos are always going to be out there. I believe this is the first time in three or four years that I haven't picked the Usos. Um, just because <clears throat> I was tempted. Like they it's very it's like one and one A with FTR. But for FTR to do the things they've done, um, despite all the fucking shocking booking and still have all these incredible matches. I kind, I kind of felt like they needed it more than anything. So I've gone with FTR, but I wouldn't dispute the Usos either. Um, the yeah, Usos are definitely up that. there. Uh, I think you made a fantastic so, yeah. piece. I'd say brilliant this year. Uh, I'd say Briscoes as well as like an honourable mention. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Briscoes are my honourable mention. I just, I love the Briscoes. Um, I've had the pleasure of being on shows where they've worked and stuff like that. And uh, they're just fantastic. Yeah. And, they've I, been, oh, and I'll tell you what, what as well, like there's a lot of reputation around the Briscoes, mm. but when I had the chance to pick their brains and speak to them about the business, they were so fucking generous with their time <laughs> and so polite and so cool. And by the way, Mark Briscoe legitimately gave me the shirt off his back. Legitimately. Yeah. The only shirt he had left that he gave it. <laughs> yeah. hey, you know, hey, I'm sorry, but... You know, you you know, marks can say what they fucking want, but the people who know better, the people who work within the business, know just how special those two are. I think as well. Can I just quickly add in terms of honourable mentions? Uh, I think Toxic Attraction have been great, Pretty Deadly, and the Creed Brothers for me. NXT's tag team division has been fire actually this year. It really Easily has. Probably the most underrated tag team division in wrestling. Yeah. Any honourable mentions from Japan, Tandy? Uh, can't. Oh, uh, Jeff Cobb and uh, Great Okan. They won mm. the to- they won the Tokyo Sports mm-hmm. Award for uh, best tag team, and they have yeah. been a pretty solid tag team. They're the only tag team I can really think of. Um, there's Aussie Open as well, but Aussie so, Open have had a great year, really great pick. match for FTR. Mm. Yeah, yeah th- those are really the only two like out of Japan. I can... uh, the Mighty yeah. Dog Neil as well, TMDK. They've had a pretty solid. Year. This year has been a really good year for tag team wrestling. Now thinking about back on it. Yeah, and there's only three men you need to thank for that. You're welcome, boys. Yeah, oh, thank you love very love much to our close personal friends, Danny Black, Callum Newman, Joe Lando. Incredible <laughs> work, lads. Well done. We're going to bring up Bushido Storm, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it to them, guys. Let's go. Bushido yeah, Storm. We'll, we'll give it to them. We'll give it to them. Don't you worry. Yeah, Obviously, cultural appropriation. Guys. Worst tag team <laughs> of the year. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> just as the Adams comes out <laughs> now nah, it would be bless off as Adams and Ajax but bless off Asi I've, heard, <laughs> I've heard of, I've heard of a little thing called root of all tricks so I don't know <laughs> um, Cav you should have been there for me Aaron and Toby's watch along of a savage pro <laughs> oh god I'm glad I wasn't actually <laughs> I mean, it was from what I can tell, it was so bad they didn't get any fans in. I mean, oh sorry, that's it. 
I know you fucking might. We were, yeah. we were, cry a cucumber at me, cry me a river. Is it fair right. to say we were at the point of offing ourselves? This is not. This is not the. You first of all, we do not promote suicide on this podcast. Yeah, we don't. No, it certainly did drive me closer. To the yes. Point. Second of all, this is the fucking mainstream <laughs> wrestling Fight Awards. So let's keep it on track. Cameron Anderson is your pick for the next, uh, the next fucking award. Which one would you like? Next to give award. Us? Let's follow it up with worst tag. I think because I think I've got a pretty good case for my pick yeah mm. all right well then let's hear your pick for the worst tag team of 2022 in mainstream wrestling all right i think these guys they wrestled at wrestlemania against my pick for the best and they had no right to be there and that's nakamura and boogs no tag team synergy no nothing they didn't they should not have been there they shouldn't have been together in the first place i think nakamura and boogs obviously yeah. boogs did hurt himself. Um, you know, rest up. I hope you get well soon, buddy. But I, I do think you and Nakamura are shit. not. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, I don't, I just don't like them as a team. I'm sorry, guys. Um, you're not wrong. That was terrible. So there's like for all the great tag team wrestling we had this year, we also had some horrendous singles combinations, which had no business mm. being in the ring and being pushed over more prominent talents in the business. So that's a good pick. Tanvi Verdi, your worst tag team of 2022. I've got to keep it with the trend, right, of what we do every year. Chaos Project! <laughs> they are fucking shit, they? <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I was going to change mine to Cam's because as soon as he reminded me of Nakamura and Boogs, I'm like, holy shit, that was bad. Yeah. And the fact that you even mentioned, and I completely forgot that, yeah, they wore at Mania against the Usos. Usos at WrestleMania. No, Usos this whole year. Fantastic. That was the most boring WrestleMania match I've uh, ever seen in my That, and then it was followed by Corbin and McIntyre. I was literally asleep. Yeah. Um, actually, Corbin versus McIntyre was quite jokes because one of my mates came in and just started ripping the shit out of both of them. But um, I have to say, that opening but, match was a snooze. Wait, was it Corbin McIntyre this year? I thought it was a uh, Corbin McIntyre at Mania, night one. It was the match after I remember it. Yeah, it was fucking... So then, yeah. What did Pat McAfee do this year? He wrestled um Vince that was McMahon. SummerSlam dickhead. Theory, didn't he? Theory. Oh yeah, he wrestled Fe- yeah. I remember he <laughs> I remember he wrestled at Mania. I just couldn't remember who. Yeah. Yeah, to be fair, he got the best match we've seen out of Corbin all year. Wait, 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 wait. Theory and Vince McMahon. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite things from watching that is the virus K Michael, who did the watch along with us, just shouting like and when Vince McMahon gets in the ring and starts a back back, he's like, nobody touches my twink. <laughs> just still pops me to this day the idea that theory is vince man's twink it's just so funny it really was mate that um, was that was the weirdest thing but i i have to say i really enjoyed it, it was oh yeah so no funny. i fucking marked so hard for it because it was just pure sports entertainment and nothing else it was pure it reminded me of like you know linda mcmahon in a wheelchair it was just good <laughs> shit had no right to be, but it was fucking hilarious. Oh, I, th- I think they really her, missed so the I trick. Can bang Tristratus right in front of her. I, th- I think they really missed the trick by just having, um, obviously, Vince beat uh, Pat McAfee, and then obviously Stone Cold makes the save. Why didn't Stone Cold just ring the bell and just beat, um, just have his last match beating uh, Vince McMahon again? That would have been amazing. Oh, yeah, funny. I know, right? <laughs> like, if you're just ringing the bell at this point, it may by as well. An honorary mention for match of the year has to go to Austin versus Owens, which was actually fucking fantastic. Yeah, like, that was brilliant. Know, considering <laughs> the age and the, the work Owens put in, and they went like a good, I think they went eight minutes, and like it was it was a good yeah. match. It was a great match. Uh, Mate, concrete I, bump from yeah, I know from Austin. Uh, what? On the I, 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 I know it's going off topic, but shout out to uh, Johnny Knoxville v Sami Zayn. That was amazing. Yeah, that's fair. Come on, bro. Yeah, fair. smashed it. With yeah, that for, a, for an entertainment standpoint, one of the more exciting matches I saw all year. Worst tag team of the year. This covers some ground, doesn't it? By the way, Chaos Project will always, or Chaos Fury, whatever they're fucking called, they will always be like... <laughs> the they Chaos will... Project Award. <laughs> yeah, like literally, this is now the Chaos Project Award. And it's that thing of... Like, if tag team wrestling is a bath, then Chaos Project is the toaster. Like, it's just <laughs> unbelievable. That's probably my favorite analogy I've ever made in wrestling history. I am, um, they are fucking the drizzling mediocrity of shit. They're not even the shits. Like, they're, they're just drizzling fucking AIDS, is what they are. I fucking hate them. But shout out to Sir Pentaco, the first wrestler this year to go 100, oh, sorry, zero and 100 in AEW. Fuck 
that. Fuck it. <laughs> and also, apparently, now a road agent for uh, for AW, which I find astonishing in its own right. Um, yeah, I've gone for something that is quite controversial mm. because they look like they had so much potential at the beginning of this year. But you know what? I am so fed up of them already. And without the main man, I think they are just falling by the wayside rapidly. And I've gone for Hit Row as the worst tag team. Yeah. I think they are fucking so... T- I really like Ashante the Adonis. And I feel like he is a massive casualty of this brand new project that they're doing. Um, You know, I know that he's hit shit on top dollar right now for his hilarious botch on Smackdown. <laughs> Um, and then his argument was, yeah, well, I did it on the Indies, all right, didn't I? I was like, mate, doing a suicide dive where you literally almost face planted the floor is not a good example of how you prove people wrong, bruv. Mm. Um, but it's it's just not good. They don't have, they just, they're very clunky. They're very botchy. Every match seems to be very mediocre. And when you consider how smooth guys like RK Bro are and the Uzos and even the Viking mm. Raiders who have come back repackaged and look great with Valhalla, um, they just feel really woefully behind the rest of the pack. And I think it's a bit of an insult that they've been pushed as much as they have over other talents who are far superior. I, I personally am going to... It sucks because I really like B-Fab as well. I think she's got great potential. She's got a great look. She's very beautiful. You know, maybe I'm, you know, sort of leaning on top dollar quite a bit. It just doesn't... They just feel like three random people who just don't fit. They don't fit. You know, it's almost like, oh, you know, because they're part of the same kind of culture and the music and the rap. And it's like, yeah, that's great. But look at the acclaimed and tell Hit Row look like a fucking GMVQ version of the acclaimed. Garbage. And also their rapping was horrible. I don't know if anyone saw it on NXT. Fuck me. Just it's because, like you said, Swerve was the glue that held them together. And without Swerve, they're just woeful. Swerve was the only star in that, and the other three are just not stars. They all feel like middling jobbers that should be on main event. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. but that's just the way it is. Um, so, yeah, the hit row are my... Any uh, honorary mentions, by the way, for worst tag teams? I can't think of any. Um, not really. Um, obviously, we mentioned earlier that um, Brawling Brutes had the biggest turnaround of the year, so mm-hmm. at the start of the year, it was looking like it could have been them with this award, but they yeah. smashed it, so... Yeah, absolutely. All right. I believe it's my turn again to pick one. We're going to, right, we're going to go with the Ricky B Award, which of course is for my beloved friend Richard Brembury, sadly passed away from a heart defect at the age of 32. A huge fan of professional wrestling and a huge fan of The Rock. He loved entertainment, he loved sports entertainment, and he loved wrestlers that could entertain like no other. And so this award is for the most entertaining wrestler of the year in honour of his name. Tanvir Verdi, who, in your opinion, is the most entertaining wrestler to watch in 2022? Sami Zayn. <laughs> A marvellous pick. N- nothing, yeah. n- nothing more needs to, be, needs to be said than his name. To be honest, yeah. blockbuster this... man is box office right now. Just incredible. The the promos, the quality of the slow burn, the build, just fucking awesome. Just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just the whole thing. Just yeah, my brilliant. dog. <laughs> I've never seen anyone play the gimmick of white man hanging out with black people better than him in all my life. He is absolutely so good. Jokes. He reminds me of the Asian guy on How High. <laughs> it's just fucking hilarious. It, Nobody yeah. drops the N bomb up and hit. It's just it so was him. funny. He's it was, so funny, so entertaining. Yeah. The it, way he's doing it across all his social media yeah. as well. When he called Jim Cornette my dog? Question <laughs> mark. Like, just stupid shit like that. It's so fucking good. He was just he was just happy. It's when's it, last time you could say you were just happy? Yeah, one. it was uh, really wholesome at the end of War Games when he got a hug from everyone. Because I remember yeah. the watch along and I that was that was beautiful. When he embraced so James Bond, awesome. the arena erupted yeah. like holy shit! This is a big but, thing. Yeah, oh. Oh. that's brilliant. Absolutely was. Mm. Oh dear. All right, Cameron Anderson, your Ricky B Award for the most entertaining wrestler of the year, twenty twenty two. Yeah, it has to be said. I got Sammy Uso, y'all. Yay! <laughs> I think we've all got Sammy. <laughs> he's been he's been so good. Like the stuff with Knoxville, the Bloodline storyline. I think the Bloodline as well. All of their segments have been fan 
fantastic. Yeah. Like I was I was at a party for Halloween and just um we were all playing beer pong and just everyone was just doing bloodline just quotes like <laughs> it's it's so it's so good and it's just like this is why we watch wrestling and it's for stuff like this. You feeling oozy, my dog? <laughs> That like, is oh my the God. most I think entertaining segment in wrestling of the entire <laughs> That literally was the next day after the, the entire party. bloodline. <laughs> that is was it... literally, that happened while we were at the party. So yeah. the next day, everyone in the group chat just messaging everyone, being like, oh, yeah, you feeling oozy? It's because <laughs> someone did a deep dive and then it's like you, and then it's like you realize it's like Sammy got the whole audience to actually chant pussy. <laughs> someone did a deep dive. It's like, okay, that, that, that makes it, that takes it from like down here. To up ahead that you got the whole crowd to chant Percy. I just think when Roman said it, it was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> like Roman's slight like, line deliveries this year have just been bang on. Like he's been fantastic. Oh, the, Seth the Rollins, way, like, honorable mention easily. It's just I the fact, yeah, you, know, you got Jimmy who's like pissing his pants laughing <laughs> in the background. Solo Sakoa, who's supposed to be the most straight faced player, is like, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. Yeah. There's, there's, there's been so many bits as well with him backstage <laughs> like, where he's like, <laughs> Fucking I, hell. He's killing me. Waffle here. House? <laughs> I was going to mention that. It was the double take of like, yeah, we're going to go Waffle House after and Jimmy just perked up like, Tim, like, yo, my dog, we, we go and oh, Waffle House. Oh, it's Jay just starts man. beaming. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. we, we go and Waffle House like you and my good books now. <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant. Um, Originally, I had MJF and then I realised what Sami Zayn has done this year and for once, I have to say, I think Sami Zayn eclipsed him. Um, which is saying something. And MJF was phenomenal again this year. He's easily the most entertaining Mike Worker in wrestling. He is phenomenal in AEW. He's by far the most intriguing watch of anything they do. The ratings prove that. They always spike when he's on as well. He is the megastar of AEW. He deserves to be the champion. Uh, he's an honourable mention for so many things. Best male, best fucking, you know, just best mic worker, most underrated. <laughs> you could just pick him for anything, really. He's so good. Um, but yeah, I've gone with Sami Zayn. It's a hat trick. It's a clean sweep for Sami Zayn. A phenomenal, phenomenal year for Sami Zayn. Congratulations, mate. You deserve it. Incredible. That's what wrestling is all about, like Cameron Anderson said. It's about having, sometimes it's just about being happy and enjoying what you're watching. And we don't enjoy it enough. There's a lot of negativity. Even on our end, we're guilty of that. But Sami Zayn has been just a joy to watch all year. And I've lost count of how many times I've pissed my pants laughing watching Bloodline segments involving him. He's been phenomenal. The corpsing segment is my favourite promo segment all year. Absolutely astonishing. Yeah. Hysterical yeah, it's, work. It's, it's been fantastic. I just think, like, for me, like, obviously I mentioned that party. For me, like, in that moment, I'm just like, this must have been, like, what it was like in the Attitude Era. Just everyone yeah. just, like, riffing off each other. That's with, exactly like, what it was like. And stuff exactly what it was like yeah it brings you back to when wrestling truly was in its golden age with millions upon millions of people watching phenomenal he's he's an incredible incredible asset to the world never mind wrestling all right tanvir verdi time for you to pick another award what you got next let's go most overrated most overrated wrestler of the year go on in tanvir who is your most overrated wrestler of the year for 2022 it's going to make some people upset. Oh, yeah, it is. Come on. Give it to me. We might be on the same wavelength. Orange Cassidy. Yeah, yeah. Fucking, yeah. You're not wrong. It's just... So, the gimmick's gotten boring. That's the main thing. The gimmick's run its Hasn't course. changed since the beginning. Yeah. And people can say, oh, well, it works. Like, yeah, it works for that small fandom. But for, like, you know, look at... Sami Zayn, for instance, everybody talks about it. People who aren't wrestling fans, like Cameron's mates, are talking about it. They're quoting it. Who's fucking quoting Orange Cassidy? Who's fucking doing that? Who's remember the thumbs thing that everyone was? Nobody's doing that shit now. It's boring, man. It's, it, it's run its course because it hasn't changed, and that's the thing. It's gotten hasn't stale. Evolved. It's gotten really stale. So yeah, that's it's, why he's my most back. overrated. Because like even over this whole year, I can't think of. Anything notable Orange Cassidy's done? Like, yeah, he's the all all Atlantic champ, but what has he done with it? Because it's been what about a month or two now? I think he's had it. Yeah. And uh... each about that is a when you fit when you say that like um, can you, so when you hear dumb. it when you think about it, Orange Cassidy <laughs> beat Ketsuyori Shibata. Mm. That, that's just mind-blowing. 
It's like, it's like saying Akira Tozawa beat Okada at Wrestle Kingdom. Like, what, the, yeah. what the fuck? Like, and by the way, Akira Tozawa much better wrestling than Orange Cassidy. I said it. Um, it's, I it's don't blame just, me. <laughs> I just, yeah, no. Cameron Anderson, the most overrated wrestler you saw in 2022. So I have to say, so obviously Tanvir picked Orange Cassidy, but I have to say the Osprey match was a banger. It was so good. Mm-hmm. Will Osprey versus Orange Cassidy, unreal. Um, mm-hmm. But for me, most overrated, um, I do like this guy, but I just feel like he was just at the top when I feel like, you know, I should have been someone else there. Uh, and that is uh, John Moxley for me. Um, I think John Moxley oh, oh, winning the oh, top. Oh. I can hear the pitchforks getting out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we sharpen them up, is baby. losing his mind right now. Sharpen them up, baby. But I just... Sharpen I just, him up. I don't know. I just, I just don't see him as that main event guy, I'm afraid. Like, that's really what it comes down to. I think yeah. he's pretty pretty fantastic, but I just don't see him in that He's a bit spot, stale maybe. as well in that product. Like, we've been well, over I think him winning the title to... twice um, for yeah. such, like, short lengths, uh, being the interim title, it, I just don't think it really helps him. I think he's at his best when he's, you know, fighting for the title, like, trying to get it. <clears> um, so him winning it twice for me was just not really... No, it's just not that interesting. Well, you think that's going to upset Adam Wessie? She went until I'll drop this bad boy. Oh, AW fans are going to be go. in my fucking inbox. Ooh, the most overrated wrestlers of the year are the House of Black. Oh, what? That is Your a pick, to be fair. That is a great pick. Boring. Fucking. Boring. Uh, I like, do love them as a trio, but yeah, I, I can yeah. see and your you know viewpoint. What? They've done jack fucking shit. Yeah. They've only really had like the they've only had two good matches, which is the revolution and the double or nothing. But even after that, that doesn't make up for it. So yeah, I can I can fully see your viewpoint. It's that thing of I saw Alistair Black in WWE, particularly NXT, and thought this guy could be the next Undertaker. This guy has all the tools to be a big fucking deal. Who doesn't want to see Alistair Black versus Brock Lesnar going full fucking shoot fight? Hold my days. And instead, we're treated to this Undertaker knockoff bullshit. Do I like um, Alistair Black as a wrestler? Yeah, he's incredible. Malachi Black, by the way, massive swing and a miss. Never had a clue what they were doing with him from the get-go. He had that weird Cody Rhodes thing, which I don't believe was this year. I think that was last year. But it's that thing of... It just it just hasn't worked. Everything they've done with him has not been good enough. The creative hasn't been good enough. And he's not had any really memorable matches for me whatsoever this year. Nor has the House of Black. I think Brody King is pointless. I don't get it. Like, I'm sure he's a great worker. I'm sure he's had great matches on the indies and stuff like that. I'm yet to see him have a standout moment in AEW whatsoever. I think um, Buddy Murphy or Matthews, whatever he's called in, you know, he's an incredible athlete. And I really like the guy. He was uh, so many years. He was like my most underrated wrestler of the year. But he has just been a complete throwaway. He just feels like the gimp of the group, you know. He's there to take the pinfall or whatever. I just think that, you know, unless they're going to... Maybe they pulled the trigger. They could absolutely be the best tag team or best trio next uh, year. But I don't <laughs> trust AEW to do anything good with them. I personally okay. think the House of Black are yeah. monstrously... They... And the reason the reason I've gone with it is because they are overrated. Because every AEW fan makes out like they are godlike. And they don't do fuck all. That is the absolute quintessential definition of what overrated is. Yeah, that's the thing of like the beginning of the year. If you said this around like revolution after their six man tag with um red beard pack and um uh, but it's Penta, one match. Yeah, that, and that, that's what I mean. Like that match was so good, but I can see everyone. Orange they, Cassidy's they, had great matches yeah. this year. Nobody can argue that. Uh, but you know, yeah. overall. They're like trying to start something with the House of Black, like taking out all the other trios and everything. But it's like you said, it's like too little, too late. That's oh, yeah. the thing. For 2022, I'm afraid it is too little, too late. 2023 may be their year, and I hope it is because I love Malachi Black and I want him to be a massive star. He should be yeah. slotted in. You know, when you see someone like John Moxley being persistently pushed down your throat as this AEW champion, you think, well, what about Malachi Black? He's got all the fucking tools. He's just as good a promo when he gets going. Like, he's got the look. He's got the great he, talent. He's a great wrestler. Um, he he's a be- wonderful human being. I just think out of all the talents mm-hmm. that they picked up from WWE or have left WWE, he is one of the easiest ball drops I've ever seen. Yeah. Useless. He, he should be the one to kill uh, Orange Cassidy for the All-Atlantic belt. Yeah, he should retire him. 
Um, but it is what it is. <clears throat> it is what it is. I'll tell you what, as an honorary mention, Chris Jericho, do not. I, mm. I, I personally don't get it. Um, yeah. I, I think it's great that his age, he's, I will give him credit. He looks fantastic. He's got himself in great shape. He lost a lot of weight. <laughs> mad love and mad respect for that. But his ego trip and the way he's booked on the shows, I don't get it. I think a lot of his matches have been tedious. I watched him versus Cesaro, Claudio yeah. Castagnoli for the uh, Ring of Honor title. And it was just fucking literally like 100 European uppercuts. As far as mm. didn't have a counter in the corner, it was embarrassing. The match just wasn't that great. It was really overrated. And the Jericho Appreciation Society is just a terrible faction that nobody fucking in their right mind yeah. really cares about. It doesn't draw. It's not a good look. It's just a load of, you know, and again, it's AW. Loads of wafty, shitty factions that don't mean anything and don't move the needle. <laughs> But yeah, I'm I'm picking House of Black. Simple as that, really. Fair enough. I think, I think for me, I, I went for John Moxley. Um, I just think the sort of the CM Punk to Moxley to Punk again to Moxley and then MJF. I just think it's just it was so muddy that for me it kind of bogs down what John Moxley was able to achieve yeah. in his matches. Was it? Um, but I, I do. I think he's fantastic. So I, I'm just giving him based on that. I, I don't think he's terrible, and it's the he's same a victim like, of with House of he's a victim of yeah. bad situations, isn't he? At the end of the day, as well with this whole yeah, I, role thing. I, I really respect what he's done. Is he's you know when obviously AW's been in a bind, he's kind of stepped up. Um, but yeah, for me, I, it's just not a position that I I prefer to see him in. I think he was fantastic last year. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Cameron Anderson, your turn to pick a topic and award. All right, all right. What have we got left? So we've got best male, best female. Uh, we've got worst male, I believe. Uh, yeah. And that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I want to go with best female because um, I think my pick. Is it's you know you can't really argue with this one um, because I've gone with Bianca Belair because I think this has been her year. I think after the match at SummerSlam last year, and people were kicking off um, me, uh, me, Cruz, Jack, we were in the pub watching, and people were kicking off, uh, and I just said, you know, like just wait, and guess what? We waited. She she won the Rumble this year. No, that was last year, was it? Uh, Did Summer you know, Slam, but... <laughs> SummerSlam last year is when she jobbed to Becky Lynch in Summer, uh, you know, in twenty-five seconds or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. it so was Ronda we... who won the Rumble this year. But yeah, she won last year. but um, Bianca Belair smashed it at WrestleMania against Becky Lynch. Smashed it at SummerSlam also against Becky Lynch. Uh, I think she was fantastic in the War Games match. I really um, liked her bouts with uh, Bailey. I just think she's been fantastic. She feels like a star at SummerSlam, like when she hit the ring and the whole, it was just electric, the whole crowd going for her. So I think really that is what being a star is all about. And that's what being the best woman of the year is all about. That is a very strong and very, very credible argument. Um, Tanvir, your best women's wrestler of 2022. Not much to add to Cam, as I have the same, Bianca Belair. And Cam can put it better than I could. So, yeah, kudos to you, sir. Yeah, uh, Jay Cargill. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, nah, I love Jay Cargill, but um, there is absolutely no dispute for me. Bianca Belair is the best women's wrestler by a country mile. Uh, incredible. And the sheer level of strength, athleticism, the mic work has improved. Um, but also the crowd reactions whenever she comes out she gets reactions like a seth rollins does she gets the reactions that drew mcintyre does. she gets high-end level reactions when a lot of the women are still getting the kind of uh, piss break thing and i'm not saying that's a good thing because it's not but there are a lot of these women like for instance you know i, I watched the women's tag team match recently on raw crowd just didn't give a fuck or completely sign and for it bianca Belair comes out boom like what the fuck big stars come out um she's just next level she is really filled that gap that Charlotte Flair left, that mainstream main event mega star gap. And she has literally just filled it beautifully. She is phenomenal. I love Bianca Bella. She's amazing. Yeah, amazing. I, I completely agree. I think Jade Cargill definitely in years to come will be in the conversation. I think Jamie Hayer, so close well. this year, I think, but I think Bianca Bella was just out of this world. Yeah. Jamie Hayer um, had a, think, a decent year, but it's that thing of like she's only really done good stuff in the last couple of months you, that's worthy of yeah. being. Best. 
Would you say Jordan Grace? Jordan Grace? Jordan Grace is a good pick. I think. You know, it's a shame actually. Impact isn't getting any love at all on this show, and we we try our best. But um, you know, obviously, Josh Alexander definitely uh, one of the more honourable mentions for most underrated for best male wrestler and things like that. And he's definitely one of my honourable mentions. But I think when you look at Jordan Grace, like she, she's definitely done really well. But I think she's been dwarfed by what Bianca Belair has been able to achieve. <laughs> Think on as well, maybe yeah. I'm uh, having a twitch over there. <laughs> oh, I, I sent you something that I think you'd love. Well, we're not, we're not, we're not fucking this is fucking Sorry. pay attention to the podcast. Yeah, yeah. I, am. I am Jesus, he's so oh, unprofessional. I was just saying, I think maybe as an honorable mention, we could say uh, Mickey James just because completely Brilliant. just yeah. shocked the world in the Rumble bringing yeah. out the uh impact uh knockouts championship one of the coolest uh, things hardcore, i saw all year was that hardcore country it was a, it was a great moment it was I so cool was especially seeing it at a viewing party yeah it was brilliant it was it was brilliant all right there are two awards left tanvir verdi let's go for worst male worst male all right tanvir who is the worst male wrestler for 2022. Now this one, I'm going to get a lot of hate. Sammy Guevara. I've just... He's just done nothing for me. And yeah. honestly... I mean, he's I done just, nothing full stop, has he? I just find him a bit kind of piss poor. Like it's been, I think the thing that turned me off and I'm like, yeah, why is this guy even on my screen? Is when he had the match with Scorpio Sky for the TNT title. And he does this like flip off the ladder and just lands on his shoulder without even hitting Scorpio Sky. I'm like, yeah, this guy is kind of not great because he's just doing doing moves for moves sake and not hitting it. Let's and be then, honest, he cares more about being a celebrity couple than he does being yeah. a good wrestler. And it, was like, and it was the thing is as well, it's like without Chris Jericho, you're kind of shit. With Chris Jericho, you're still kind of shit. So... By the way, Tainara Mello was a big Honorable mention for worst women's wrestler idea. Yeah, it's just been just been piss poor for Samuel Guevara. I'm like, yeah, I'm just yeah. just don't know why you why they keep him stuff around. Eddie Kingston didn't help either. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's not a bad choice. Cameron Anderson, the worst male wrestler you saw all year in 2022. I think for me, for most of this whole year, I've been thinking like, yeah, can't wait to just rip into Sammy Guevara. The backstage stuff, the the weird goings ons. But I did watch Full Gear and I did watch the Ring of Honor Fatal 4-Way match and he was so good in that match. So actually, worst male is the only one I have blank. I can't. I couldn't think of anyone. Oh, no way. Oh, yeah. No, no like, way. I couldn't on, think Dad. of anyone. I couldn't you think of anyone. fucking piece of shit. Like, no, I'm sorry, but like, yeah, no, you you are. Yeah, this. Yeah, no, you're getting docked points for that. that oh, all. we'll just put top dollar in there. Fuck it. Good, because that's my cool. choice for 2022, <laughs> top dollar. <laughs> Good, because like, I've, I've picked top dollar. Um, I, I don't get it. I you know I don't dislike him as a human being, obviously. I think he's clearly a nice guy, but I hate his ring gear. I hate his look. I hate his wrestling. I, I think he's fucking mediocre at best. He's botchy, he's sloppy, he's not that good a worker. Everything he does just comes across as rich, especially in a company where you've got guys like Gunter and Strowman. And even if you don't like Strowman, you can't argue that he hits his offense well. You've got Otis, you've got all these fantastic big guys who can really move around well. Bron Breaker. And you've got this top dollar who looks like, Ooh. you know, LeBron James got let loose at an all-you-can-eat <laughs> buffer. Like, just like the whole thing just... I'm <laughs> sorry. But yeah, Betek the, Shaq. The, he does. He looks like B-Tech Shaq. Like, you know, it's just... Okay. it's When the first thing they always say about him is, ah, oh, yes, ex-American football player. It's like, yeah, because he ain't got nothing else going on. He's, he's not good at all. He's really not. Like, and he's in a tag team division as well. So it's like, you know, when you stand out as that bad, when you've got people to cover for you, like Ashante, who's a good worker, that really speaks volumes to me. I, I think he is the drizzling shits. I, I'm sorry, but I think he is. I, I just, I don't get it. I don't enjoy it. You know, it, it does, it sucks to call out wrestlers and say they're rubbish, but I do not understand how he can be on mainstream TV 
And yet guys like Pack, I, I know he's getting plenty of coverage at the moment because of the trio swing. And that's like, let's be honest, that's only because the elite want to be on TV more often. But, you know, when you see someone like Pack not getting regular TV time, you see top dollar on TV every week. Fuck off, man. They, no, I yeah, just, no. Tedious. Absolutely um, tedious. Can I put an honorable mention for worst rest, for worst male then? Of course you go. Oh, almost. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he sucks balls. Yeah, because we yeah. were, talk- we were talking just, about, like, yeah, big, nice. tall dudes. I'm like, yeah, Fucking almost. Hell. Like, just, just, it's like, it's like Black Gonzalez, isn't it? It's fucking just, it's just terrible. It's not good. Not good at all. I don't like it. Uh, any honorable mentions before we move on to our final pick? No? Hmm? Cool. We'll get cracking. I mean, Cameron Anson didn't even really pick one. He was forced to say top dollar. <laughs> um, so it is what it is. All right. So we end with, of course, the pinnacle of wrestling for many, the best male wrestler of 2022. And we'll go with Cameron Anderson to start. All right. I'm 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 going with this guy. I wasn't sure if I could pick him, but I think I'm going to go with him because I want it just to be on the record. What are you putting your hand up for? We the ones. We the ones. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually not going with him. I Obviously, honourable mention. But for me, I just think someone who I had at the worst last year and he just turned it around in three fucking matches. Cody Rhodes, I've got. Even though he's not been there for most of the year, I think the Hell in a Cell performance was just on another level. Um, and for that, um, he's just the guy that I've been basically just itching to see get back in that ring. The so, Raw Rumble. Um, it's gotta be it's gotta be Cody or Big E, right? As the last two. I think it's... I think Cody wins the Rumble. Um, yeah, so, so do me, I. And I, I think Sami Zayn costs Roman Reigns as well. Uh, but for me, um, I w- there's no dispute that he's fantastic, and he what he did was amazing. Not enough of a sample size for me to be best wrestler of the year. Um, that's my personal opinion. But, um, you know, it is your pick, and that's why you get a pick. That's the joy of being on here. It is democracy to a certain degree. Yeah. Uh, Tammy and Verdi, I'm the gonna... power wrestler of the year, 2022. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I bet you've got great it... O'Connor, Annie. <laughs> no, I'm going to hold it up to the camera. Hopefully it picks it up. Yeah, boy. <sighs> I, I, I initially had Gunther, but then I'm like, no, Josh Alexander's had such a great fucking year. I mean, he just capped off the year with a freaking hour long match with Mike Bailey. Oh, Speedball. oh and he, my and it's just God. The match, the match, the match with e, the match with Ishii, the match with Moose, the match with Eric Young. He's just had such a great reign that I'm like, Eric Young, I RFC. love him so much. Oh I love God, Josh yeah. Alexander so much that I'm like, for me, he's my wrestler of this year. He's, yeah, and uh, he should be Impact Champ forever. <laughs> yeah, he was my pick last year, and I think I, it's such a shame that Impact doesn't have the far reach that so many other places does because he is by far and away one of the best wrestlers of the modern era. I think truly the, astonishing, a wonderful I, human being. You know, he's intrinsically linked with the podcast. He's mm. been on the podcast. Cameron Anderson owns his boots, which, to be honest, is something that I would be bragging about for the rest of time. Um, you know, I've made T-shirts for the guy. He's an incredible human I being, an incredible <laughs> talent, and so <laughs> humble. And you know, didn't lose a step when Ethan Page left. And he went, oh, there goes the North. You thought. He could start, and if anything, he became stronger yeah. and he's led Canadian wrestling. You know, he for many people, he's and for me, he's the modern day Bret Hart in a lot of ways. Like, he is the big thing from Canada. He's for me, he's Canada's best wrestler. Um, absolutely amazing and incredible talent, but he's not my wrestler of the year. Uh, my wrestler of the year is Baron Corbin. Um, truly, yes. truly no, just, no. <laughs> I was gonna be like, really? <laughs> um, no. It's no, absolutely <laughs> fucking not. And now that he's associated with JBL, I refuse to pick him for anything because uh, JBL sucks massive donkey balls. Um, that guy can get in the fucking bin as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, no, my rest of the year, actually, Tanvir briefly mentioned him, Gunter. Um, for me, if I was starting a wrestling promotion, um, the very first name I would have on the list is Gunter. For me, he is what every single wrestler should aspire to be. He 
has not had a single match which is less than four stars this year. He is lights out, utterly incredible, and he is growing and growing and growing. The Imperium, by the way, um, you know, old, good old Kaiser is easily one of my most underrated talents of the year. He's so funny and so good in that obnoxious, almost, you know, U-boat commander role of Guntar in general. The whole thing works well. Um, they really redefine what it means to be a foreign invader in wrestling. You know, you look at the famous guys, you know, people like Iron Sheik, um, you know, the, the original Sheik, um, Tiger Ali Singh, these guys who kind of, you know, slowly redefine what it meant to be a foreigner in wrestling. Rusev as well for a long time. Now Gunter has taken up that mantle. And man, some of these matches are just, just blow you away. The match with James, the match with Ricochet, his work with Ilya Dragunov. Everything Mysterio. he does is match Rey Mysterio was fucking amazing. Like the best thing I've seen Rey Mysterio do in the last 10 years. Um, absolutely incredible. He is truly, truly a credit to the sport of professional wrestling. So how can we yeah. not mention the Donny Brook? Yeah. Oh, do you know what? <laughs> love it. Love it. I, I fucking love it. Imperium is one of those factions. You never get nearly as much of it as you want, but because of that, you're always left wanting more, so you're always excited to see them. So I think they've booked them really well. A lot of people say, oh, the Imperium, you know, you don't get to see Imperium enough, and all that. that's a good thing, because you really want to see more of them. Sometimes you don't need to get everything you want in one go, and that's something that's really good about it. Gunter feels like a special attraction. And for me, logistically and legitimately, probably the one true man who could dethrone Roman Reigns right now and be universal champion. And it would seem realistic and the match itself would fucking slap so hard. Um, I feel like Gunter is, and also he has made the IC title one of the most honorable and most privileged belts again. All of a sudden the IC title feels like a big fucking deal again. It's the workhorse belt again. They have done wonders with that. He has pretty much single-handedly made that belt Really special again. That belt for me is as important as any other belt in wrestling. Phenomenal. An absolutely phenomenal year for Gunter. Yeah, amazing. And also, you know, when his name was changed, let's be honest, we all thought, fuck that shit. And he has made it his own. <laughs> so, yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Any honorable mentions before we move on to what our wonderful fan base picked? I've got a few. I've got a few. So, obviously, Roman Reigns, Sheamus. Yeah. Um, I think Seamus has been fantastic this year. Uh, Seth Rollins as well. Um, Theory's really stepped up recently. I think MJF has been phenomenal uh, pretty much the entire year. Um, a bit weak on the build-up to the um, full gear pay-per-view, but I think that that's part of the storyline of you know, this weird circumstances anyway. Um, yeah, those are my ones. Yeah, Josh Alexander, obviously, an honourable mention. Gunter was yeah, my pick. Roman Reigns had an astonishing year. I, I, It really took something special to get me away from Roman Reigns. Yeah. Um, but I feel like his work, his body of work last year was better than his body of work this year in terms of quality of matches. Um, that being yeah. said, him versus Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam, fucking slapped so hard. Man, yeah, Brock um, Lesnar on here too. Yeah. Um, Stone Cold. Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens will always be, I mean, one of them. I, I can guarantee if Carl Wilkinson had bothered to turn up for work, he would have absolutely had Kevin Owens as his most underrated rest of the year. Um, he's going from strength to strength again. Um, there's a lot of guys there. There's a lot of, it's hard. It's very difficult when you've got this platform not to give credit to all the people you want to give credit to. But the great thing about wrestling is that so many people know what is great and what isn't. Um, and everyone's got a different opinion of it. And that's why we're going to obviously throw in a moment to the end of your award picks that we have got from our lovely and loyal fan base. So shall we start with Frankie T and have a look at who he's picked for his end of your awards? And we shall have a look at it once I've read them all out. So his Ricky B award for most entertaining wrestler of the year goes to Sami Zayn. Mm -hmm. So he agrees with all of us. Match of the year, Gunter versus Sheamus. Most underrated is a great pick. Ludwig Kaiser, phenomenal. Yeah. Um, most overrated, Kenny Omega. Yes. Uh, worst tag team of the year, the Young Bucks. Yes. Ooh. Worst female of the year, Shotzi Blackheart. Worst <laughs> male, Orange Cassidy. Best tag team, FTR. Best female, 
Ha, oh, Liv Morgan. Uh, that's a great choice. Probably the most improved wrestler of the year alongside Ridge Holland. And uh, best male, the tribal chief, Roman Reigns. What do we think of those picks? Pretty solid, I think. Pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah. A yeah, strong nice, showing. A strong mm. showing. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Cruz. Uh, also a member of Bromance and one half of the CWP tag team channel. Look at that, it is. Hold it up, baby. It's Ferds, though. <laughs> it's Ferds. We're free bird in this shit. Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is true. Uh, the Ricky B Award for Most Entertaining Wrestler of the Year, according to Aaron Cruz, is MJF. Can't argue with that. Best match, Sheamus versus Gunter at Clash at the Castle. Made even better by watching it with the lads. Most underrated, Kip Sabian. Hey. Come on, bro. Come on, get a grip. <laughs> get a fucking what a state of it. Most overrated, Braun Strowman. I bet Carl Wilkinson is rejoicing at that choice. I think um, Strowman's underrated, you know. I think for what he is, he's pretty fantastic. Um, I I don't know. I I think he's very underrated. Worst mm. tag team, he agrees with me. Hit Row, struggled with the worst this year, but I feel with these wrestlers, something just doesn't click for me, so he's gone with Hit Row. Worst female, Lash Legends. Who's that? In NXT. She's oh. in NXT. Yeah, she's she's not fantastic. Interesting. Um, um, you know, what's, what's Hit Row and Lash Legend got in common? with each other? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bruce, oh, oh, the culture! Oh, oh. <laughs> For the culture, Chris. not on, brother. <laughs> yeah, nah, okay. Bruce cancelled. Uh, worst male, Von Wagner. Not a bad choice. Wagner. What? He's so uh, Wagner. <laughs> Just boring as shit. He has redeemed himself slightly. Best female, Bianca Belair. Um, best tag team, FTR. Uh, best male, Gunter. There you go. Some uh, some fine choices. Some interesting ones, but some fine choices. So, Robbie Nitro has sent in his choices. Oh, here we go. The Ricky B Award for Most Entertaining Wrestler of the Year, Sammy Zayn. Even Robbie Nitro knows. Best match of the year, Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins inside Hell in a Cell. Can't mm. argue. Cannot argue with that one. Most underrated, Ricochet. Okay. Most overrated, Austin Theory. Ooh. I I disagree. I think he's pretty great in the role he he had with Mr. McMahon. I actually really liked him in that role, and now I think well, he's doing better now. Yeah, worst tag the Viking Raiders. It's a bit unfair. They haven't really wrestled all year, have they? Because yeah, uh, not not really a sample um, size for them. Worst female Natalia. That's always a fair bet, to be honest. Jeez. I don't I'm know. Like, it, like I can't think of a single Natalia match this year. I don't think I've seen. Neither one. can she's I. Been, she's been in the background a lot. She has not done much. Has to be. Was they at WrestleMania this year? Um, nobody cares. Uh, Sorry for the tag. Worst male Dominic Mysterio. Hmm. I, I, I think it. that's fair up until Clash at the Castle because I think he's he's slowly coming into his own. I do quite like him as a heel. I've I think enjoyed the Rhea Ripley Clash... stuff. Yeah, I'm really. I, I do enjoy that, and I think at Clash in the at Clash at the Castle that was like a shock moment. Yeah, like that was great just seeing that happen. The worst, uh, the best tag team, excuse me, the Uzos. Good choice. Best female wrestler of the year, Bailey. Interesting choice. Been out, been out majority of the year, so I don't really know. And the first person to pick a double winner, best male, Sami Zayn. Yay! Yeah, I, 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 can, I, can, I can agree with that. Yeah, I mean, in terms of all round entertainment, absolutely. I think the only thing that stopped me picking him as best male was that he didn't have as many standout matches as guys like Reigns or Gunter or Josh Alexander. Otherwise, he definitely would have yeah. been a pick. But overall, very interesting picks. Uh, so this one. The final one to be sent in is no doubt going to be because he, of course, he Adam was, Wessex. Yeah, and he's put. A fucking, oh no! He's put a novella in here. For fuck's it's going to be fuck's AEW. It's going to be all yeah. AEW for fuck's sake. Ricky, B, what are you doing, bro? Most hmm? um, yeah, I have no idea. Most entertaining wrestler of the year. How can anyone not put Sami Zayn here? He has entertained the world. He has corpsed about eighty-five percent of the WWE locker room at this point. Toppy, toppy. So entertaining and absolutely one of the best things to watch on WWE. That's a good choice. <laughs> Sloppy. The match <laughs> of the year. Okada versus Osprey. FTR versus uh, the Briscoes. 
FTR versus the Young Bucks, Sheamus versus Gunter. But anyone who has spoken to me over the last year about my favorite match knew what was coming. John Moxley versus Yuta. I had all the feels. I absolutely love what happened in the match. Yuta came over like a fucking Spartan. Beautiful in match storytelling. The build up, the OMFG blade job. So well done by both wrestlers and a match that has taken up permanent headspace in my brain with how amazing it was. It was a big match at the time. It's kind of faded off to the wayside. It's because we know you boring as shit. Um, I haven't seen it, but I I will check it out. I'm I'm not a fan of the blade job, to be honest. I yeah. um, you know blood is pretty icky in my opinion. <laughs> blood is pretty icky. icky. <laughs> It Most the- underrated wrestler of the year, according to Adam Weesix, the bunny. She doesn't deserve to be a jobber. She's good in the ring. She looks awesome. Great on promo. Has put over many wrestlers and is one of the main reasons why the Butcher and the Blade are much higher up, in my opinion, than they probably deserve to be. I think that's fair. That's, that's kind of fair. Most overrated, Big Bill. Uh, Who the fuck? Oh, that's, um, that's W Morrissey, isn't it? Is it? Oh, okay. It's Big Cassie uh, just got renamed to Big Bill. <laughs> <laughs> no way. I swear and to people God, he's fucking Big wins Billion. about Butch. I've got to find this. I've got to find this. Yeah, Big Bill, be he's signed with Big AW. Bill. Big Bill, be signed just... with AW. Would you two shut the fuck up? Big Bill, <laughs> been signed with AW for half a year. There was a lot of hype for him, but he just doesn't have any charisma or showmanship, barely any emotion. I'm not sure he works without a mouthpiece. I disagree, actually. I like. I like WC uh, W Morrissey. Right. I like him, and to be honest, I don't think there was really any. Well, you can be one of five people who's bought his t-shirt, then, can't you? That's... Maybe, maybe, I'll... maybe. Obviously, you've got way too much disposable income. Worst female of the year. This one hurts me, as she is one of the hottest women in professional wrestling. Someone who I think was great in NXT, but babyface isn't suiting her, and her money in the bank and war games were terrifying to watch. Blah, 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 blah. She, she's got the goods. She just needs to let them out. Shotzi Blackheart. So, obviously, that's the pick I had. But, you know, that's not really on Adam Wessex. Just saying, oh, because she's so sexy. Mate, that's actually very demeaning. Stop objectifying women. women. Mm. Unnecessary. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's I just mean, bad. I'm, like, you just you shouldn't say that. It should just be about I mean, the Wessex, of some matches, Wessex, the character. Wessex saying she's got the goods, just let them out. is basically him saying, get your tits out, love. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Worst male. Yeah, what the hell, bro? What the hell? Hey, hey, hey Adam's <laughs> words, not mine. Adam's words, not mine. Say actually, she, I just don't think really those are his words. words. He's not he's like he's got the goods, let him out. He's got the goods, let him Yeah, I think he's talking about a wrestling acumen. Even I have to fucking save him a little bit there. Worst male. I struggle with this one. I am, as we all know, a Mark who likes to give compliments rather than abuse. You're full of shit. But this is definitely going to AEW. So many great talents who haven't had a chance to shine properly, but two I don't really think are going to make an impact are Satnam Singh and Parker Boudreaux. Sure, both of them, but worst Mal, I think he's going to Satnam Singh, just very meh in everything. Besides, Let's make him a what? real beast. W. Mate, Satnam Singh deserves to be honourable mention for best wrestler just because of the way he threw Darby Allen. I'm sorry. Satnam Singh is the boy. Satnam Singh. Fuck yeah, now. Satnam best, sings the bra. Best tag team. I'm sure you knew this one was coming. FDR. Cash and Dax have demonstrated so many times just how good they are this year. They're absolutely a pair that you can build a promotion with. And even with AEW having a great tag team division, they have blown all challenges away. AEW, Ring of Honor, A, Triple AAA, R, AAA, IWGP, all deserved to think I used to hate these guys when they first started in WWE. There you go. Uh, best <laughs> female. As much as I wanted to say Tony Storm for best female, just to make you drive down to beat me, I think this has to go outside of my AW preferences here. Bianca Belair, I think, has this one. She's been talked about absolutely everywhere and with good reason. Astounding growth, astounding capabilities, and I really think WWE is her oyster. It's probably the smartest thing you've said. Uh, and his best male of the year is MJF. Absolutely blown away with his promo skills, his in-ring talent, and his ability to play the work like nobody else. Would he turn babyface? Wouldn't he? His rivalry with Punk, his rivalry with Wardlow. I was very tempted to... By the way, his rivalry with Wardlow sucked. Um, just saying. I was very tempted to put Okada, Osprey, and Mox here, but all hail the devil of AEW. Best male. MJF. <laughs> I, right, Tanvir? What are you doing? I, I, 
I went into a wheezing fit because as you were looking down, Cam gave sloppy toppy. He gave you, he chased sloppy. No, because as you were reading, because he went like that. Just... And, yeah, he went like that and I was losing it. I'm, I'm sorry, I have to take a minute. I'm it's losing... just because Adam Wessex no, was good. just sucking off FTR so much that I had to just give it one. <laughs> right. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, wraps up the mainstream end of year awards for 2022 of wrestle plug honestly coming up to six years at wrestle plug next march pretty mad when you think about it um yeah crazy um yeah some great wrestlers some terrible wrestlers and everything in between um but yeah hopefully you've enjoyed it hopefully you've uh found the funnies and the entertainment and just remember it's a fucking joke try not to get offended all the time internet it is what it is. And if you don't like it, don't fucking watch. Simple as that. Cameron Anderson, Tambu Verdi, thank you very much for joining me for the WrestlePlug Mainstream End of Year Awards. We will be back very soon with the WrestlePlug British Independent Wrestling End of Year Awards. And that is going to certainly turn some heads. And no doubt there's going to be a few egos just that Oku are going to be... takes everything, doesn't it? Who does? <laughs> just Michael Oku <laughs> taking mm. every single award. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. I do like Michael Oak. He's been he's had a fantastic year. He's been amazing. But yeah, no, go, come on, mate. How can you look past Jackson Arrow? Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> so yeah, you're just a hater. Him. That's what you are. It's just a hater. Um, honestly. <laughs> you're going far too deep with the culture thing. <laughs> it is what it is. But from myself, Aaron X, from Cameron Anderson, and of course from Tammy Verdi, thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you very soon for more content from the Wrestle Plug. Bye. Bye. Have a really good time. Mm. <laughs> 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 <laughs>